Hello everybody, it's Jay Roby. Today we're going to be looking at the Philidor position, and uh, the last video I made was on the Lucena position. Um, but the Philidor position is um, how black can draw even though black is down a pawn uh, in a rook versus rook pawn ending. And if you'll remember from the Lucena position, which is uh, shown here, the key to the Lucena position is that the uh, white king or black king, if you're black with the extra pawn, is in front of the pawn. And if that's the case, then you can use your rook and your king together to build a bridge uh, to allow the promotion and there's nothing that your opponent's going to be able to do about it. However, in the Philidor position, there is something that can be done. And you'll notice right off the bat the huge difference here between the two is that the enemy king is in front of uh, the pawn of the side with the material advantage. So that's a huge difference. So basically the general gist of the Lucena position um, requires that the pawn um, have its king in front of it. However, in the Philidor position, it's the enemy king in front. So we're going to show how black can draw this position even though it's uh, a pawn behind in material. And it basically, uh, the general goal of uh, the Philidor position is to prevent the king from ever getting in front of its pawn. Because if it can ever get in front of its pawn, um, white is going to be able to either promote or make black sacrifice its rook. So the move order for the book lines, uh, we'll look at those. And I'm also going to look at some different variations, um, including a Fritz versus Fritz match, because I've uh, heard from watching some other videos and um, reading up on some online sources that there is a draw possibility for black if it swings its rook down to h1. And I was very curious about that, and I wanted to see exactly how that draw would take place, because I wasn't able to find any examples. So I put Fritz up against Fritz, and I made Fritz start with the rook down here. So we'll get to that later. Um, but let's get started here with the book lines for the Philidor position. Um, so I was, as we talked about earlier, the main goal is to keep uh, this king from ever getting in front of its pawn. And the best way to do that is simply to move the rook down to h6. So as you can see here, there's a buffer created by the rook. Um, that this king cannot cross. Um, so it's preventing the king from ever getting in front of its pawn currently. So white will check. Black can move its king back to e8. White will swing the rook over to a7. And then from here, the, the next move is a very simple waiting move. It's just moving the rook over one because uh, black wants to maintain this buffer preventing this king from getting in front of its pawn. Now, white really doesn't have a lot of good moves. Um, white could check with the rook here to uh, a8. However, the black king can just swing to uh, e7, and it can go back and forth over and over again. So the, a rook check here does absolutely nothing for white. Another option for white is to move the king to a different square, either uh, e4 or uh, d4, but that doesn't accomplish anything for white. So the most logical move for white in this position is simply to push the pawn up. Now what this does, um, if we take a moment to look at the position, is you'll notice that the black king here has a buffer that's stopping um, this king from ever accessing those three squares. So all black needs to do is swing its rook down now, and it's going to open up lines of attack on the enemy king where it can land check after check after check. So as we'll see here, um, if white plays the natural move king to d6, black can simply come in now and land check upon check upon check, and eventually a draw will be reached because the white king has nowhere to hide. Um, and its only really other option is to try to come down somehow uh, to attack the rook. But that usually leads to just dropping this pawn outright, and then we'll reach a draw position anyway. So that's the uh, the book lines for the Philidor position. Let's take a look now at what happens with some variations. Now the first variation I've come up with here is um, swinging the rook down to h1. Now this isn't the Fritz game yet. We'll get to that soon. Um, but we're going to look at how swinging the rook down to h1 and then immediately starting to check the king uh, will lead to a losing position for black. Although it might seem natural to some to bring this rook down immediately and open up these checking lines, um, white can capitalize and uh, work some uh, some good movements to get into a Lucena type position where the king will be in front of its pawn and from there it's all lost for black. So we'll take a look at it here. So black will swing the rook down, white will land the check, black king goes back to e8, 
White swings the rook over, and now if black tries to land a check immediately, uh, white gets the nice magical square right here in front of the pawn by simply moving king to e6. Now the white king is in front of the pawn, black is in deep trouble, uh, because from here you'll notice that white is threatening checkmate next move. The white king is uh, preventing the black king from accessing these squares, and if the rook goes down, next move to uh, a8, it's game over. So black has to do something about that. Uh, the best bet for black here is just to move the king to f8 and white can check further pushing the king away and white can now move the king up to e7 and there's really nothing that black can do here because if it uh, lines up to attack the pawn white simply moves the pawn forward the king's protecting it and from here um, it's just going to be uh, a slow process uh, to get the game won white will basically uh, push the pawn up and you'll notice here that the rook on the f file is preventing the black king from contributing at all and all of white's pieces are working together, uh, which will inevitably lead to either black sacrificing the rook here um, or um, just outright losing the game. So that was uh, what can go wrong if the rook comes down to h1 and immediately starts to check um, the, the white king. Let's take a look now at the Fritz match because I was very curious about um, how the position can be drawn if the rook comes down to h1. I wanted to see exactly what uh, what people were referring to when they mentioned that it still has a draw possibility but it's very convoluted. So what I did is I created a Fritz versus Fritz match and I made Fritz play black um, against white and uh, Fritz's um, uh, rook was into the h1 position so if you were to create a Fritz versus Fritz match there's no way it would uh, move the rook down to h1 so you, you kind of have to make it do that um, so I was very curious to see what Fritz would do so this is how the Fritz match went um, white checks king peels back to f8 attacking the rook Rook swings to a7, and here's the magical move that will create the draw in this position for black. It's simply to bring the rook right back to h6, uh, preventing the white king from making advancement. Um, so that's how a draw can still be reached. So really, it's it's just not even worth bringing the rook down to h1 to begin with because you're just going to pull it right back anyway. Uh, but we'll go through the rest of the Fritz match here and you'll get to see how Fritz uh, capitalized on itself uh, to get the draw. So basically it's just keeping the king in check and eventually Fritz decided that it's going to try to bring its uh, king down to attack the rook, um, which loses the pawn. And then from here, uh, the match just continued until the uh, 50 move limit was reached and a draw was uh, obtained. So I found that very interesting. Um, but all in all, I've really enjoyed going over these two positions. Uh, in Jeremy Selman's book, uh, his Endgame book, um, he recommends that I think it's around the 1400 uh, range that you should be learning these positions uh, in and out and mastering them. And uh, so that's basically why I've been focusing on them lately. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the videos and uh, um, we'll definitely uh, continue on with Endgame videos. I'm not too sure if it's going to be my next video. I have been looking at uh, a couple things that I really want to uh, work on. Um, so we'll keep you posted on that, but take care. Hope you enjoy the video, and we'll see you next time.